All right, guys, so today I am doing my top 10 favorite horror movies of all time. Now, there's a couple things I want to say before we get started. Um, the first of which is, some of you might already know this, but for those of you who don't, uh, this is just my top 10 personal favorite horror films ever. I'm not attempting to do what I think are the best horror films or the most popular or anything like that. These are just the ones that I'm most drawn to, the horror movies that really fit my taste, the ones that I like the best. Personally, I'm not saying that they're great horror movies by any means. Some of them I think they are. But yeah, these are the, just the ones that I personally like the best. And another thing I want to say too is that, as you guys know, there's a lot of great horror movies out there. And it's really difficult to pick just 10 of them. Um, if I had to pick 10 horror movies that I could only watch ever again, um, it would be, these would probably be it. But again, it's a really difficult list to make and it might change over time as of right now this is my top 10 but who knows um a week from now or a month from now this list might change completely aside from maybe like the top five on here so yeah just keep that in mind as well uh it's just really difficult to pick top 10 and you know as i continue to watch horror films and discover more hidden gems or even classics i've never seen before this list might continue to change um but as of the as of the time making this video, um, this is my top 10 list. So without further ado, let's get started. At number 10, we have Fright Night. I have a vampire living next door to me and he's gonna kill me if I don't protect myself. <laughs> what? <laughs> The 80s classic and arguably one of the greatest, if not the greatest, vampire films ever made. Um, it's my personal favorite. Obviously, it's on this list. And what I like about this movie is it reminds me of a Goosebumps story. Um, even though this came well before Goosebumps, um, I think just the whole idea of a young adult, a teenager, pitted against this overwhelming and overpowering supernatural force that he feels helpless and hopeless against. He really doesn't have anyone to turn to. He tries to convince his peers and his mother that his next door neighbor is a vampire. And of course, nobody believes him, which in turn just kind of creates more suspense and this rising sense of just dread and hopelessness for our main character as he realizes that he's kind of on his own. And yeah, he has to do something about it. He can't just um, not fight this vampire that's out to get him and his loved ones. And yeah, it just does a pretty good job of creating this suspense, I think. And it reminds me of a Goosebump story because a lot of Goosebumps books are like this where um, the main character is just pitted against this supernatural force or a monster or something of that sort and tries to idiotically convince his parents and his friends uh, what's going on. And of course, no one believes him. And so he's just left all alone to face this evil. And another thing, too, that I like about this movie is that it's kind of comedic a little bit. It's not uh, just straight horror. I feel like it's mainly horror, but it does have some comedic elements and is even a little bit self-aware at times, which um, adds to the enjoyment of this movie, I think. It doesn't take itself too seriously. And this movie also has a great classic soundtrack, um, very nostalgic, even though I wasn't a child of the 80s and I didn't watch this as a young kid. Um, there's just something about this movie that still feels very nostalgic and cozy, and it's all just very entertaining. And this movie has great special effects as well. I absolutely love the special effects in this movie. I like how the zombie, or not the zombie, I don't know <laughs> where I got zombie from. I love how the vampire is portrayed as like this evil uh, monster, and then is also kind of romanticized a little bit too. Um, but of course, it doesn't go too far into the romantic sization is is that a word um it's nothing like sparkly vampires or anything like that he's mainly portrayed as this wicked monster and yeah i absolutely love this movie um fright night the classic 80s vampire film which makes it onto my number 10 at number nine we have john carpenter's the thing now this is one that i just watched recently for the first time i believe last year and I really like this movie. Obviously, it's on this list. But this is just one that I've always heard about. And I've seen on a lot of other people's um, favorite horror movies lists. But for some reason, I've just never watched it. 
and I just decided to watch it last year, and I was thoroughly impressed by this film. Uh, this film does an amazing job at creating this sense of isolation, as these guys are um, not stranded. Well, they're basically stranded on this um, like scientific, like military type base in the Arctic, I believe, Antarctica, somewhere around there. And an alien, some kind of alien presence or entity um, reveals itself there and starts taking the form of these people and taking them out one by one as these guys try to figure out um, what's going on exactly and as they try to fight back um, quite futilely. <laughs> things don't work out so well. But yeah, this is a great movie. Um, the suspense is done very well. I love the character interactions in this movie and the dialogue. It all feels very believable. The special effects are great. Um, this is just a really good movie. Um, I'm not a huge fan of like sci-fi horror. I've never been a big sci-fi person, but I really like how well made this movie is, honestly. Um, I have not seen the original Thing movie from, I believe, the 50s, and I also have not seen the remake. But if I never see them, I would be okay with it. This is, I've heard the best one, and <laughs> I'm very glad to have finally watched it. And yeah, this is just a, a great movie. And one of the things, too, that I really, really like about it is the ending. The ending is so, so good. <laughs> um, yeah, no spoilers or anything, but I love the ending to this one. And yeah, I don't really have to talk about this movie too much more, I think. This is one of the more well-known and beloved classics, I think, that are on this list. So, And it's probably on a lot of your guys' list as well. So John Car Carpenter's The Thing comes in at number 9 for me. At number 8 on this list, we have a horror comedy. Now, when I was making this list, I realized that there are a lot of horror comedies I like. And honestly, I might be able to do an entire video, <laughs> a top 10 of just horror comedies. But for now, I just decided to include a couple of my favorite horror comedies. The first of which comes in at number 8 on this list, and that is Dead Alive. Oh, Fernando! Your mother ate my dog! Not all of it. This was directed by Peter Jackson and was released in, I believe, 92? Um, I'm not seeing a date on the back here. I believe 92 or 93, around there. And this movie is just something else. <laughs> this movie is absolutely ridiculous and over-the-top, bloody and gory. Um, this is another one that I saw somewhat recently for the first time, and I really like this movie a lot. This movie actually made me laugh out loud a few times, which does not happen very often at all, even in a straight comedy film, if I'm watching, I just don't have the tendency to laugh out loud very often, um, especially if I'm watching a movie by myself, but this one managed to do that for me at least a couple of times that I can recall. Um, this movie is just wild and extremely bloody and gory. Um, there's a ton of carnage candy in this movie, and I absolutely love it. Um, one of the things, too, that I really like about this movie, I'm going to make a comparison here, and uh, don't come at me. I'm not necessarily saying... This movie is better than those, um, but it kind of reminds me of these movies, and that is the Evil Dead franchise, or at least the first couple of Evil Dead movies. Um, this movie very much um, feels like those movies a little bit, but turned up to 11, even more bloody and violent and comedic, and I feel like the humor in this movie lands a little bit better for me than it does in the Evil Dead movies. Even though it's along similar wavelengths, it's a lot of slapstick and visual gags and um, things of that nature. I just feel like it works slightly better in here. And what another thing that's really great about this movie, um, besides all of the comedy and the ridiculous over the top blood and guts and dismemberments, is that this movie actually has a very interesting story, even if it is a bit um, straightforward. And that is um, our main character, Lionel, is living with his mother, who is very overbearing very controlling, a very selfish person, and Lionel falls in love with this young girl, and they begin to date and hang out, and his mother is just very jealous and doesn't want him hanging out with this young girl. Um, she wants him all for himself and to keep him locked up in their um, fancy mansion that they live in, and this isn't really a spoiler. This happens fairly, fairly early on in the movie. His mother is bitten by a Sumatran, I don't know how to pronounce it, rat monkey, I believe it is. 
Um, I'm not even sure if that's a real animal or not, but it basically infects her and causes her to turn into a zombie. And his mother basically this turns into like this zombie and eventually something else, which I won't spoil, which kind of becomes a metaphor for um, him having to stand up to her in order to move on with his life and live out his own life and escape her um, jealous and controlling behavior. And a lot of this movie, I think, is kind of um, like romance almost, too, as he uh, tries to mend his relationship with this girl that he just met as it's kind of on the wire. Um, his mother is kind of standing between them a little bit. So there's kind of an interesting story going on here, too. It's not just all um, shallow, mindless um, blood and guts. And I find it very interesting. And yeah, I just really like this movie. It's even a little bit heartwarming at times as we see this relationship between Lionel and Paquita is her name, this girl that he's in love with. And on top of that, um, if for nothing else, the movie is worth watching for this scene alone. <gasps> Party's over. So yeah, you'll have to watch the entire movie to, <laughs> to see what that scene is all about. But this movie is just a ton of fun and a little bit even touching and interesting at times, like I said, with the story and the character's relationship and everything. And it is just so over the top and ridiculous, but it's all in good fun. So yeah, Dead Alive is... One of two horror comedies to make it on my list and comes in at number eight. At number seven, we have the other horror comedy on this list, and it manages to beat out Dead Alive by just a little bit, and that is Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. We have had a doozy of a day. A real doozy. Uh, there we were. Yep. Uh, minding our own business. Yep. Making some improvements to my new house. The new house? When all of a sudden, out of nowhere, these kids started killing themselves all over my property. Which is probably my favorite horror comedy of all time. Again, there's a lot of horror comedy movies that I love, and it was tough to pick just two of them to put on this list. But these are my top two. And this one I think I like just a little bit better than Dead Alive. And this movie is just... This is such a great movie, guys. <laughs> um, this movie is funny. Um, heartwarming. I mentioned Dead Alive has kind of an interesting story and it's a little bit touching. This one is even more so. This one manages to be, I think, a li little bit better at being serious and having um, more believable romantic interest and while also managing to balance that line of comedy and um, that whole aspect of just terrifying horror. Not terrifying horror, but very violent and bloody horror. Uh, this movie isn't quite as gruesome and grotesque as Dead Alive is, but it still manages to offer a lot in the way of Carnage Candy. And yeah, this is just a really, really fun movie. And it also has kind of a good message, which I really enjoy. And that is um, to not judge people based on their appearances. Um, it's kind of a straightforward, very obvious message, and it's done in a very over-the-top, ridiculous manner. But essentially, it's about these teenagers who are going camping up in the woods. Uh, very standard, um, very common horror movie trope. Except the whole thing is kind of reversed with this film, where as they stumble upon these um, backwoods hillbillies that are living up in this part of the woods, um, at first the teenagers are very afraid of them and you know think they're psycho killers or something. And it turns out that they're just ordinary guys that like to be out in the wilderness and fishing and hunting and all that stuff. Maybe not hunting, but they're just, you know, the outdoorsy types. And the teenagers peg them as these, you know, crazed, deranged killers. And um, they capture um, one of their members of their group. Um, I'm already forgetting the characters' names, even though I just watched this recently. And they think that they're torturing her and doing bad stuff to her. And it turns out that they just rescued her, is all. Um, she ended up falling in a lake and, like, hitting her head on something and getting knocked out, and they rescued her. And so it's this big misunderstanding as these two hillbillies care for her and then try to reach out to their friends. And then the teenagers um, just think that they're, you know, <laughs> these crazy guys that are out to kill them all. So 
it's a very hilarious movie. I love the setup. How I, I love how it completely reverses the classic trope of going up to the woods and encountering um, these backwoods hillbillies. And it's just all done very well. And like I said, I kind of like the message, too, of not judging people um, based on their appearances, even though it's done in such an obvious and kind of heavy-handed way. And the comedy in this movie all lands very, very well for me. I think this movie is honestly quite hilarious, and it manages to balance that line of horror and comedy and violence all very well. Um, it's a little bit serious and dark at times, but then it's also very lighthearted as well. So, yeah, this movie just manages to balance that line very well, and I just absolutely adore this movie, and it's probably my favorite horror comedy, which is why it comes at number seven on my list. At number six, we have a horror classic that I just recently watched for the first time, I believe earlier this year, or maybe late last year, and I absolutely loved it and immediately went out and purchased a copy of it after I watched it, and that is 1942's Cat People. Uh, there is in some cases a psychic need to loose evil upon the world, and we all of us carry within us a desire for death. You fear the panther, yet you're drawn to him again and again. Couldn't you turn to him as an instrument of death? And this movie spawned um, a sequel and then also a remake, I think, that came out in like the 80s, which I have not seen. But I absolutely adored this movie. This, I believe, is one of the very first ever psychological horror films, possibly the first one, and would go on to inspire other movies within that genre. And I will admit that this movie is very much um, a slow burn. Um, it's pretty uneventful in the first half of the film. There's not a lot that goes on. But we do see a lot of this budding relationship between this couple. It's kind of a romantic horror a little bit too almost. Um, I guess romantic horror is um, kind of my thing apparently. I didn't know that but it seems like a lot of movies, horror movies on this list have romantic interest in them. So who knew? <laughs> but anyway, I absolutely love the psychological elements of this movie and how well done it all is. And basically between this couple... Um, we start to see that the woman is a little bit, um, I don't know how to describe her. I don't want to say messed up in the head. She's not really that messed up, but, um, she has these ideas. Um, she's mentally ill, I guess. And she has these ideas that she'll turn into a cat or a panther or something along those lines, um, when she is aroused. And so she's afraid to get closer to, um, this guy that she's essentially in love with because, she doesn't want this beast to be unleashed, or she doesn't want to transform into this creature. And I just absolutely love it. I love the idea of it. I love how well um, executed it is. And like I said, it is a little bit of a slow burn. You have to have some patience um, with this movie, especially if you're not a fan of classics. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this. Um, but if you are a fan of older movies I and you haven't seen Cat People, I would definitely recommend checking this one out because this is a great movie and one of the things that I think this movie does very well is atmosphere this is one of the most atmospheric horror movies I've ever seen honestly um, it's just very eerie and creepy and you just feel like there's always something just lurking within the shadows and that something might happen at any given moment even though a lot of the things in this movie are kind of left up to the imagination there's not a lot of visual horror in this movie it's all very subtle um, but this movie does a great job at um, delving into the human psyche and studying these characters, kind of. And, uh, yeah, this is just a great movie. I absolutely love it. And, yeah, I don't really know what else to say about it. I feel like I cannot um, adequately describe um, how smart this movie is and just how great it is, honestly. So, if you are into older classics, I would highly recommend checking out Cat People which comes in at number six on my list. At number five, we have another classic that I've just recently watched for the first time. And I don't know how I've never seen this one before because this is a very well-known, probably the most popular and well-known classic on this list. And that is Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, released in 1960. Yeah, I just saw this for the first time recently, like um, a few months ago, I think. And I absolutely fell in love with it. I immediately went out and purchased the Blu-ray of it. And this movie, one of the things that really amazes me about this movie is it's aged extremely well. Even though this was shot in 1960, it feels like this movie 
could have been made like a few years ago and it would have been just as effective honestly um there's a few things in here or a couple things that haven't aged as well um one death scene in particular not the infamous shower scene but there's another death scene in here that's very strange and that one uh, maybe hasn't aged the best and there were a couple other things in here that were maybe just slightly cheesy but for the most part this movie has aged very very well i think and I absolutely love uh, the structure of this movie. It's unlike anything I've ever seen. Um, it's hard to talk about without spoilers. But this movie was very, very unique for its time. It's done something that um, no other horror movie has done at the time of um, this movie was released. And yeah, it was just very daring, very creepy. This is kind of a psychological horror movie as well. But it also feels like a crime thriller. And it's just very dark and just spooky and i love the twist ending to this one um somehow all of these years um obviously i've heard about this movie again it's a very well-known classic um probably one of the most popular horror films ever but for some reason i just never watched it and even more miraculously i've never been exposed to the twists of this movie um i don't know how <laughs> i have no idea how i've never um had the twist spoiled for me or anything like that but somehow I managed to avoid spoilers, and I finally watched this for the first time recently, like I said, and just absolutely fell in love with it. This is honestly a great movie, and I feel like I need to watch it again, and this might change places on my list in the future. Because again, I've only seen it the once um, somewhat recently, but I definitely think that this will forever be somewhere on my top 10 list. And yeah, this is just a great movie. I did find the twist somewhat predictable like just because i've seen so many horror films over the years and read so many horror books and just been so exposed to the genre that even though i wasn't exposed to the big twist at the end prior to watching this i still kind of saw it coming a little bit but yeah this was still a super enjoyable film and one other thing too that i want to mention is the acting in this movie um, especially by Anthony Perkins, I believe is the name of the actor who plays Norman Bates, is just absolutely phenomenal. Some of the best acting I've ever seen in a horror film, um, or at least some of the best acting that's on any of the movies on this list. Um, the acting is just very, very convincing. Anthony Perkins does an incredible job. He just sells the entire movie, in my opinion. And yeah, what more can I say about Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, released in 1960? Uh, yeah, this is just a classic. This is probably the most popular or, I don't know, mainstream movie, I guess, on my list. You guys probably know all about this one already. I'm a, I am know I'm a little bit late to the party with Psycho, but I'm glad to have finally watched it. And I can gladly say that it comes in at number five on my favorite horror movies of all time. All right, guys, we are at the top four on my favorite horror movies of all time. And while I mentioned earlier that there's some flexibility for... The other movies on this list, they might change positions or eventually even be replaced by other horror films in the future. I feel like these ones are movies that will forever remain my favorites and probably forever in their top spots. So, on to the top four. At number four, we have another horror classic released in 1941, and that is The Wolfman. And this is, again, um, I'm starting to notice a pattern here. I don't know how I never noticed this before. Again, kind of a psychological horror um, with a heavy focus on romantic interest. And, yeah, I don't know what it is about that, but I guess I um, am really drawn to those movies. <laughs> so, The Wolfman is a famous classic with Lon Chaney Jr., arguably his most popular movie. And this movie is just excellent this is a great horror classic um this is one that maybe hasn't aged as well as psycho there's some things in here that um don't stand the test of time quite as well but the, i absolutely love this movie and as you guys probably already know i'm a huge werewolf fan and i think this is the greatest werewolf movie ever made um and what makes this movie so terrifying i think is that um, Lawrence Talbot, I believe is his name. It's been a little while since I've seen this. I believe that's the name of the main character as portrayed by Lon Chaney. 
and he falls in love with this girl. And um, soon after, he is bitten by this wolf. He ends up killing the wolf, but in the fight, he ends up getting bitten or scratched. And he ends up turning into a werewolf himself. And the transformation is kind of a slow and painful experience. And at first, he's not even sure if he really is changing into a wolf, if maybe it's all in his head. And again, this movie introduces a really um, interesting psychological aspect to it that's done very well. And it's just quite terrifying to see this main character endure this torment as, as he has to deal with um, the fear of possibly hurting his loved ones, especially this girl that he's falling in love with. And throughout the film, um, this curse takes more of a hold over him. It continues to torment him. Um, to the point where he doesn't know what to do. He just feels completely lost and hopeless. And to me, that is one of the most terrifying things ever. Um, to be turning into the monster yourself and having no power to stop it. Um, having basically nothing you can do, being completely hopeless. Um, it's really, you know, not that scary to be running away from the monster or the villain or whatever it is that you're facing. Um, it's far scarier to be turning into... The monster yourself and possibly hurting the ones that you love and yeah i feel like this movie just tackles that theme very very well and i feel like this is maybe not inspired by the classic story jekyll and hyde maybe it is a little bit but i feel like it's a very similar story in that fashion where um like i already said the main character is just uh slowly transforming into this um evil creature that is going to possibly hurt and kill others and there's really not a whole lot he can do about it and yeah to me that's just a terrifying idea and i absolutely love how that along with the psychological elements of this movie are just very well conveyed and the acting is great as well lon chaney jr is one of the classic horror actors um one of my favorite actors probably and yeah i don't know what else to say about the wolfman this is definitely my favorite universal monsters movie I like some of the other Universal Monsters movies as well, but I feel like this is the best one because I feel like it's a little bit deeper and has more substance than the others. Um, a lot of them are kind of like I said, you, the main character is just running away from the villain or the monster, and a lot of them are just very surface level entertainment. And this one just goes a lot deeper than that and explores um, the pain of the heart and the mind and the agony of having to endure what uh, Lawrence Talbot has to go through in this movie. And it's just kind of heartbreaking, kind of a heart-wrenching movie. And it's also very atmospheric, too. I love the setting of the woods and the, the, and the fog and everything. It's just a very eerie movie that, even though it may not stand the test of time as well as some of the other classics on this list, such as Psycho, um, it's still very effective, I think. And, yeah. Again, I'm a huge werewolf fan too, so I'm a little bit biased with this one being my favorite Universal Monsters movie, but it comes in at number four on my list. Um, what else can I say about the classic Wolfman? Absolutely love this movie. All right, guys, we are at the top three of my favorite horror movies of all time. And at number three, we have 1968's Night of the Living Dead, directed by the one and only George Romero. I absolutely love George Romero's directing style. I like a lot of his other movies, but this one, his debut is, I believe this is his debut movie, is still my favorite of his and my third favorite horror movie of all time, as well as my favorite zombie flick of all time. Not a huge zombie guy, to be honest. A lot of the newer zombie movies, most of them, I don't really care for at all, and I'm not even a huge fan of the sequels all that much. Um, I know a lot of people even prefer his sequels, Dawn of the Dead and Day of the Dead, but I think this original is by far the best one. Now, this is a movie that I actually saw when I was younger, I want to say in my early teens, like uh, 13 or 14 years of age maybe is when I first watched this. And at the time, um, I wasn't necessarily in love with it. Uh, I actually watched this on our old desktop computer that we had on some website that had free movies with my brother. And I found it fascinating because at the time, 
I hadn't really been exposed to a lot of uh, classics yet. I hadn't really seen many black and white movies. Um, I wasn't really that well versed in horror movies at all, to be honest. And at the time when I saw this, I was kind of fascinated by just the style of film, um, the style of filming and everything. And and I even found it a little bit cheesy, uh, the zombies, the way they looked and the fight fight sequences in here and things like that. Um, I just didn't fall in love with it right away. But as I grew older and I rewatched it, I began to appreciate this movie more and more. And it led me to want to seek out more older classic horror films um, made like in the 50s and 60s and things like that. So this movie is very, very important for me. It had a really big impact on me. Um, like I said, at the time, I wasn't as exposed to classic horror. And this really kind of opened the doors, kind of opened my eyes to what was out there. And the more I watched this movie, the more I appreciated it and just saw that how good this movie really is and how when this was released back in 1968, this movie probably just blew audiences away. There was nothing like it at the time. And yeah, this movie is absolutely incredible. And it really is a very effective character study of these um, people that are trapped in this house as um, it's basically the start of the apocalypse, the beginning of the end as these people rise up from the grave and just hordes of the undead flock towards this house and they trap these people there and they began to argue and fight among one another, this group of people, a conflict brews between them. And this movie is just very, very tense, very on the edge of your seat. And I just absolutely love um, the dialogue in here and the character interactions. I feel like it's all done very, very well. And yeah, this is just a great movie. Um, Again, this is kind of a movie on this list that's pretty well known and popular at this point, I think. I think it's probably on a lot of your guys' lists as well. And yeah, I don't really know what else to say about this movie that hasn't been said already, but I definitely think this is the best zombie movie ever made. It's my personal favorite. And yeah, this movie is just excellent. If you're a fan of horror and you've never seen Night of the Living Dead, you need to watch this movie. If you're you're a horror fan and you haven't seen this, there's something wrong there. Um, <laughs> this movie, I feel like, is essential to the genre. And obviously this spawned, you know, the hundreds of zombie movies that came after this, the more modern zombie movies without Night of the Living Dead, you really don't have the zombie genre. Even though there were some zombie films before this one, this one really brought to life and kind of gave the idea of what zombies were. It kind of created the more modern zombie, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And one thing too that I found really fascinating about this is even though this movie is a little bit restrained and... Um, it was made in 1968 at a time where violence and blood wasn't really prominent in horror films. Uh, there is a couple of scenes in here that are actually kind of gruesome when this zombie horde is kind of flocking towards the farmhouse and they're eating blood and guts from dead animals and they're um, rotting and it shows their skin and rotting away and their wounds and everything. Uh, very effective, very well done. And it's just all very creepy and yeah, I absolutely love this movie. Night of the Living Dead is a classic that I've seen many times now, and I've just come to appreciate more and more every time I've watched it. And the ending to this movie also, um, I remember the very first time I watched this as a teenager, when I saw that ending, I was just like, what the hell? Like, why would you do that? Like, it actually ticked me off, and I did not like the ending. Um, but again, as I've seen this movie more, as I've grown older... I've actually come to kind of appreciate the ending. It's supposed to be, um, it's hard to talk about without spoiling it. Many of you probably already know what it is anyway. But um, yeah, I've come to appreciate it more and realize that it's just part of the tragedy that this movie is. So yeah, this is a great horror film, a classic Night of the Living Dead, guys, comes in at number three on my list. All right, guys, my second favorite horror movie of all time is none other than Spider Baby. Oh, we're not very formal here at uh, Mary House. And the big black spider goes round and round. This movie was released in 1967. It was actually made in 1964, either 63 or 64, and wasn't released until late 67 early 1968 due to the producers um, running out of money. But anyway, 
This is a movie that I just recently watched um, for the first time as well. I believe I first discovered it a year ago, and as soon as I watched it, I immediately fell in love with it and asked myself, how have I never seen this before? Now, some of you might not have even heard of this movie, like I, for so long, um, have never heard of it until just somewhat recently. And this is definitely more of an obscure, uh, lesser-known horror film, and I really feel like it deserves... Um, more of a, it already has kind of a cult following, but I feel like this movie doesn't really get talked about that often. Um, I don't think I've ever seen this movie talked about, to be honest, but this movie just fits my tastes perfectly. I don't know what it is about this film. Uh, it's advertised as a horror comedy, but I feel like it's primarily horror. It does have some comedic elements in it. It does have some dark humor in here, but I feel like it's primarily horror. Um, this movie is very, very dark and also very heartwarming and just kind of a sad movie as well. There's just something about this movie that really just pulls me in to the story and the characters. Um, and this movie is, I'm kind of just all over the place right now gushing about it. I'm trying to <laughs> gather my thoughts on it. I just actually recently rewatched this again last night. And I love this movie just as much as when I've seen it the first time. So this movie is kind of advertised as a horror comedy. But again, I feel like it's primarily horror. The comedy is kind of far and few in between. And what this film is about is it's basically about this family. Um, their last name is Mary. And they're just the descendants of this these people that are basically inbred. And the Marys um, suffer from this disease of regression with age this progressive deterioration of the mind essentially um as they grow older they become stupider and regress into um a state of um this primitive nature this primal behavior um involving cannibalism and murder and these other just fleshly um desires and things like that and it's just very very fascinating this movie is unlike anything I've ever seen. This is one of the most unique horror films out there, in my opinion. And, yeah, I, <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with this. So, I will admit that this is probably not one of the greatest horror films of all time. Um, I don't even know if I necessarily can recommend this movie, because I definitely don't think this is for everyone. But there's something about this movie that really draws me into the characters and the story. There's something that's so appalling about this family and their wicked behavior, but there's also something so alluring about it at the same time. Car of yours. They're talking about us, Virginia. I know. So, um, this family is consists of these two young girls in their, um, I believe in their teens or um, maybe early 20s, I don't remember for sure, I believe like in their late teen years, and then also the one son who is already a little bit older and has already regressed into this primitive state and doesn't even really have the ability to speak. His mind is already um, kind of fading his, his mental capacity. And their caretaker, Bruno, played by none other than the famous Lon Chaney Jr., who I will say um, gives an amazing performance in this film, arguably the best performance of his career. Um, I would almost think that his acting in this movie is better than in The Wolfman, or at least just as good. I absolutely love Lon Chaney Jr.'s performance in this movie. And story has it, in one of the special features of this film, um, during the making of, I believe, that Lon Chaney Jr. Um, did not make very much money in this movie at all. This is just a very low-budget movie. This is Jack Hill's directorial debut. And, yeah, the budget was very, very low. And they contacted Lon Chaney's agent, and they said that he wouldn't do it for such a small price. And Lon Chaney, I believe, read the script, and he's like, I'll do it. This is incredible. I, I'll play the part. And this was one of the last movies he played in because he just found it so intriguing, as did the rest of the cast. And it certainly well-deserved. This movie is unlike anything you've ever seen. And um, like I said, kind of going back to the plot a little bit, I'm kind of jumping around a little bit here. I just get so excited about this film. Um, the plot of it is basically Lon Chaney Jr. playing as the caretaker of this family. Um, the other members of the family have passed away long ago, and Lon Chaney Jr. made a solemn oath to the Mary children's father 
that once they were gone or once their father and their parents and the rest of the relatives were gone, he would take care of these children for the rest of their lives and care for them. So they're basically living all alone in this secluded, old, creepy house. And um, what's really interesting and one of the things that really draws me into this movie is Lon Chaney characters, Lon Chaney's character in this movie. I'm trying to actually think of his name. Even though I just watched this, I'm drawing a blank and can't think of his name, Bruno. Um, Bruno is very dedicated and devoted to these children despite their mental illness and just very primitive behavior and desires to kill others and just kind of messed up behavior. Um, he's very devoted to these children. He loves this family and he's dedicated and um, very loyal to the Mary um, lineage and determined to care for and look after these children because no one else will and there's really no other option other than to like send them to an institution which of course Bruno refuses to do. So it's kind of heartwarming and touching and as appalling and disturbing as some of the things that take place in this movie as performed by the Mary family, you also sympathize with them a lot or at least I do. Uh, I really sympathize with these characters and really almost come to love this family as much as Bruno and you um, feel bad for them that they have to endure this disease and yeah it's just I don't know <laughs> I think part of the reason I love this movie so much is I don't think there's any other horror movie that draws my emotions that draws out my emotions for it quite like this one does um the wolfman did that a little bit um but this movie takes it to a whole new level for me um I really do sympathize with the characters here and I just absolutely love um, the chemistry, too, between the actors is just incredible. The two sisters in particular. I love their dialogue and interactions with one another. They're just very um, mysterious the way they talk and kind of seductive and just um, just very creepy and eerie. And there's just so many mixed emotions going on, but it, it's all done very, very well. And yeah, I absolutely love Spider Baby. This movie is sad at times, very tragic. It's funny at times, and it's also just very dark and disturbing. This movie just manages to blend so many different things together very, very well, in my opinion. And it offers just a, such a unique experience that's unlike anything you've ever seen. Um, I know I'm repeating myself a little bit here. I'm struggling to find the words to adequately describe this film and just how much it means to me. But I'm kind of failing to do so a little bit, I think. Um, if you've seen Spider Baby please comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are on this one because like I said, this is a movie that I don't see get talked about very often at all. In fact, I don't know anyone who is as much of a fan of this film as I am. And the ending of this movie, I'm not going to spoil anything, but the ending is also very dark and kind of tragic. And yeah, I don't know. It's kind of weird because a lot of the reasons I like this movie are typically reasons that you don't really go to a horror movie to see, and that is just the emotion of it, um, how well it manages to be serious, even though it's a bit lighthearted at times and has its comedic tones as well. Um, I just love the whole theme of unconditional love that Bruno has for this family, and even um, the love between the Mary children themselves, even amidst all of their atrocities and deranged behavior that, they're, that they perform and take part in, so... Yeah, there's just something so appalling and alluring about this movie simultaneously. And if this movie has any flaws, it's that it leaves me wanting more. Uh, I feel like I want to see more of the Mary family. It ends on such an abrupt and tragic note, and it just leaves me wanting to see more of it. it I feel like it's a bit restrained. I feel like we only get a small glimpse into this family's life. I feel like we don't get to see... Um, everything that's taken place before, it just leaves a lot up to the imagination. Although the film does end with a little bit of a tease, um, kind of giving some implications that the story does continue a little bit, even though this is the one and only movie of this uh, series. There's never been a remake or sequel or anything like that, at least not that I'm aware of. And I don't think there should be either. I don't think a sequel or a remake could ever do this movie justice. And yeah, this is just one of my favorite movies of all time, not just my second favorite horror film. And I don't know what else to say, guys. I'm at a loss for words. I absolutely love 
Spider Baby, Jack Hill would go on to direct and write other films during the 70s. He was very well known for uh, directing some exploitation 70s films with lots of sex and violence and things like that. I haven't really seen any of those, I don't think. Um, but this was his directori directorial debut, and it is just an absolute masterpiece. It, like I said, this movie kind of has a cult following and has gained um, some more popularity over the years. But at the time when this was released, um, nobody thought anything about it. It was just a throwaway movie. Everyone just thought it was trash. Nobody ever thought it was going to be anything. And it's still not, you know, like a huge movie. It's definitely not mainstream or anything like that. But I would urge you to watch this if it sounds interesting, if it sounds like something you might enjoy. And I would love to have a discussion in the comments um, with you if you've seen this movie. But I would go into it with modest expectations, despite it being my second favorite horror film of all time. Um, like I said, it's not for everyone. I definitely don't think this is one of the best movies ever. It's a very strange, very unusual horror film. But there's just something about it that fits my tastes perfectly. I love the blend of different elements in this movie. Um, like I said, of horror, a little bit of comedy, just very um, emotional. And it's also very dark and kind of disturbing at times. But yeah, absolutely love Spider Baby. And that is why it comes in at number two on my list. All right, guys, we are at number one, my favorite horror movie of all time, and will probably remain my favorite horror movie of all time for the rest of my life. Um, I don't think anything will dethrone this classic from the 70s, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This is a 40th anniversary deluxe edition that has Blu-ray, DVD, and then just a ton of bonus features. Endless bonus and special features are included in this collector's edition and yeah texas chainsaw massacre is probably the only horror movie to ever truly unsettle and disturb me i first saw this and i want to say my mid or late teens uh, maybe around 16 or 17 years of age roughly and when i first watched it i was just enthralled and amazed at just how much it unsettled me and disturbed me and when it was over i was just like wow like i just this movie was just like a punch to the face it just just very shocking even for its time and even still it holds up very very well even by today's standards i think that this movie manages to disturb and shock you unlike any other horror movie out there and even though when i first watched it it managed to do all of that i didn't necessarily fall in love with it right away i didn't walk away thinking that this was my favorite horror film of all time but it really stuck in my mind it, i couldn't stop thinking about it it just really stuck with me and i ended up buying it and re-watching it and then i would go on to re-watch it again um at a later time and i've seen this movie probably at least six or seven times now if i had to guess and each and every time i've watched this um i've liked it more and more i appreciate this film way more than i did when i very first watched it and this isn't the type of horror film that I enjoy in the same way as the other horror movies on this list. Um, I feel like this is this one is the definition of what horror is. This is what you go to see a horror movie for. This one is truly terrifying. Um, this one has no comedic elements to it whatsoever. It's not a funny movie. Um, it lacks emotion, I think. There's no romantic interest going on here. This movie is just straight up brutal relentless horror and it's done in such a way that is just absolutely terrifying there's a lack of blood and gore in this movie surprisingly when you watch this film it seems like extremely violent and i remember i'm um, thinking like just how violent and just crazy this movie is the first time i watched it and then as i've gone back and rewatched it um i've realized that there's hardly any blood and gore in this movie it leaves um, some stuff up to the imagination and it manages to balance that line perfectly it's a very hard line to balance to get just the right amount to show you um visually um the violent acts and murders taking place and but leaving some stuff up to the imagination and this movie just balances that line perfectly i think and every time i've watched this too i've picked up little things here and there that I never noticed before during my last rewatch of this, which was um, earlier this year, a few months ago, I believe, um, during the whole beginning scene when they're in the van and they pick up the hitchhiker, 
I love how that whole scene kind of foreshadows what's to come and kind of gives us a little glimpse into the insanity and deranged mental state of this family. And I've just noticed some things about it that I never really noticed before. And even though this is a pretty straightforward surface level, um, not a slasher, I don't want to say, I don't really think this is a slasher movie. Um, but even though it's a pretty straightforward horror film in the sense that um, these young people basically go up to this house and then are just stalked and um, brutally murdered by this insane family. Um, I feel like there's some more stuff going on here a little bit that you could analyze. And one of the things that I think makes this movie so terrifying, too, is that the horror in here all feels very real, very believable. There's nothing supernatural about it. There's no monsters. There's no ghosts. It tackles a theme of perhaps the most terrifying horror of all, and that is human nature. Um, even though there were rumors about this movie long ago about it being based on a true story, it is, in fact, not based on a true story. It was loosely inspired by, um, I believe, some real serial killers, but this film is completely fiction, but it feels like it could have been real. It feels like this could actually happen. Um, there's nothing more terrifying than um, people, honestly, and the atrocities that they commit. And what's even scarier yet is the iconic Leatherface villain is not the main horror of this movie. He's just a puppet on a string of this um, demented, deranged family as they kill these innocent um, young people and basically cut them up for dinner. <laughs> these inbred hillbilly cannibals. This is the ultimate movie in that genre. Um, there's been many after it. Um, Hills Have Eyes uh, and then Wrong Turn and lots of others like it. And I enjoy that subgenre a lot. And I think part of it is just because it is a little bit believable. Something like that actually could happen. But this one is definitely... Um, the epitome, I think, the best example of that genre. This one is just, I feel like this movie is, in my opinion, the most disturbing movie ever made. <laughs> this one stands the test of time, unlike any other horror movie out there. And every time I've watched it, it continues to unsettle me and make me uneasy in new ways. And yeah, I don't, I'm at a loss for words, guys. I feel like I cannot properly describe this movie to do it justice. Um... You just have to see this one for yourself. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is, in my opinion, one of the greatest horror films ever made. And something else that's actually kind of interesting about this movie that I forgot to mention in my Spider Baby review when I was talking about that film is I believe this movie was actually a little bit inspired by Spider Baby. It kind of takes the whole idea of having an inbred, um, mentally diseased family. And in this movie, it just kicks things up to 11. It takes things to a whole new level. It ups the violence and the gore in, in a much darker and twisted offering than what Spidey, Spider Baby is. And I feel like Spider Baby um, definitely should get a little bit of credit for starting that whole trend, that little subgenre of horror of the killer family. Um, but this movie definitely takes the cake for being um, the king of that genre. This movie... I don't know, guys. I don't know what else to say about it. There's just nothing like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And I absolutely love this movie. And again, this movie offers what you go to a horror movie to see, um, to be scared. This movie is just brutal, gritty, relentless. Again, this movie um, was kind of a low-budget film as well. I don't think it was as low-budget as uh, Spider Baby, but I believe this was just a low-budget film. Um, the conditions in which they filmed this movie were very harsh, um, very uncomfortable. And this movie just manages to be an absolute masterpiece and unlike anything in the horror genre. Um, again, this is one of those movies too on my list that I feel like is um, somewhat mainstream, a pretty well-known classic at this point, and I'm struggling to find things to say about it that haven't been said already. So you guys probably know all about this one, but if you haven't, you need to go watch this. If you have not seen The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and you consider yourself a big horror fan, you need to go watch this because you're missing out. <laughs> this is my favorite horror movie of all time. And yeah, I don't know what else to say about it. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, released in 1974, directed by Toby Hooper, guys. You need to go watch this film. Absolutely terrifying. 
All right, guys, that's it for my top 10 favorite horror movies of all time. Let me know down in the comments what your 10 favorite horror movies of all time are. I would love to have a discussion with you. Um, let me know if you've seen any of these movies, what your thoughts are on them. Um, I would love to have a discussion in the comments. Let me know if you would like to see more TV or movie-related videos in the future. Um, I'm definitely not going to turn this into a channel about movies and TV shows. I'm always a bookworm at heart, and I will continue to do mainly book reviews and things of that nature. But yeah, I've been wanting to do this for a while now, and I'm glad to have finally talked about my personal favorite horror films. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching, and as always, um, have a great day, guys.